when he was saying demonstrate, legislate, reconciliation. Demonstration, legislation, reconciliation. The demonstration is the expression of outrage to make the government change, and the government changes through legislation. Okay, so what is the change going to be from all these protests and all this outrage? What is it? And don't give me just a press release where all these politicians put a press release, I think we should change tear gas. I think we should change rubber bullets. Uh, I think we should change the color of uniforms. This is not about tear gas or rubber bullets or slogans or the color of uniforms. This is about making fundamental change to the system, and it's hard. And by the way, the system is going to push back. Don't kid yourself. When you go to change the status quo, the status quo rears up to defeat change. That's life. That's society. What we're saying in the state is to accelerate this and engage it, local governments and police departments have to come together, have to have the discussion in a collaborative, come up with a plan, and pass it through a legislative body. New York City means that city council has to pass it by April 1. Have the hard conversation. Come up with a plan, but get it done by April 1 if you want funding from the state. And answer the tough questions that will actually bring about change. What functions do you want the police department to do? That's where this starts. Then what staff do you need to do that? Reduce the police department. Reduce the police department. What do you want it to do? And then what is the staffing for that police department with those functions? Defund. What does that mean? What is the budget? The budget is what you need to pay for the staff after you decided what functions you want to perform. What is your use of force policy? Demilitarize the police. What does that mean? What equipment do you want to take away? What procedures do you want to take away? What is the transparent disciplinary process? How does that work? What is the citizen complaint process? And who's going to review it? How do you use data to drive deployment? How do you address bias within the police department, which is so real and has been in existence for so long? How do you link the police with the essential services, with the mental health, with the substance abuse, et cetera? Those are the real questions. Those are the questions you have to answer to actually have the change we should have. And if we use this moment where change is actually possible, that has to be done community by community. Because what New York City is going to want is going to be different than what Buffalo wants, is different than what Albany wants, and that's the way it should be. But we need leadership on the local level to stand up and start this real process and this real discussion. On reopening, New York has been smart about handling the coronavirus crisis. Smart means we follow the facts. We did testing yesterday. We do testing every day. We did 68,000 tests yesterday. Just think about that, 68,000 tests in one day, okay? Sounds like a lot. It is. It's more than any state, more, more per capita than any state, more than any country on the globe per capita. Yay, New York. 68,000 tests, big sample. What did it say? 0.9, less than 1% positive. Lowest percent positive since we have started lowest percent positive since we have started. Highest number of tests, lowest percent positive. Highest number of tests because we've been ramping up testing, ramping up testing, ramping up testing. So that is just great news. And that's why I am in such a happy, go lucky mood. That's why I am a cool dude in a loose mood.
You look at all the numbers in the chart. All the numbers in the chart are good. New York City, we reopened. Yesterday, we were 1%. When we started on Saturday, 1.4. So 1.4, 1.3, 1.2, 1 1.2, 1. Great, 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 great. Only caution sign across the state, central New York, 0 0.6, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1.1. How did you go from 0 0.6 to 1.3 to 1.4? Something happened, maybe. That's right. So then we go back to the tracing function, which is up and running, go trace the positives and see if they lead us to anything. They did. In central New York, Oswego, there is an apple manufacturing plant uh, where they take apples and they uh, process apples for sale. And there is a cluster of cases in that Apple manufacturing plant, about 34 positives in one plant. That's bad news, but it's also good news. That's the way this is supposed to work. You see an increase in the numbers. You trace the increase. Does it lead anywhere? Were they at the same party? Or are, they, are they at the same employer? Were they at the same protest? In Oswego, they were working in the same plant, get to that plant, address it. But other than that, all the numbers have been good. New York City, you see by borough, we can look at the numbers and it's all been good. Lowest number of hospitalizations since we started. Amen. Number of deaths ticked up a little bit, but the overall curve is the lowest we have seen. So it is all good news all across the board. Our New York City uh, reopening, the way we do this, the way we've done it in every region across the state, is we compile all the data. When we get near the end of that phase, we have state officials review it, and we then have global experts review that data to make sure there's nothing in the data that we're missing. And we don't look at just the top line data that I show you. Not that you are not public health experts also and statisticians and scientists and you would be able to see things in the data. I believe that about you, Andrew, not Zach. We have global experts who look at the data and uh, when they sign off, then I sign off. I do not sign off until they sign off. So they're reviewing the New York City data. It's supposed to go on Monday. They'll watch it Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They're studying it now. Uh, but all the indications are good. So I'm saying today uh, you'll get a final announcement tomorrow. But uh, I am saying businesses should plan on reopening. Uh, we just had a call this morning where we went over the New York City data and everybody is feeling good. So uh, my advice to New York City businesses, plan to reopen Monday on phase two. Now, phase two is phase two. This only works, this whole process, because every phase has rules. And if you follow those rules, it is a controlled opening of the economy. It controls how many people are introduced uh, into the city, into, onto public transportation, onto the sidewalks, et cetera. As that number is increasing, local governments can then get their act together and deal with the increase. That's part of the phasing. But there are rules. It's not, we reopen, hallelujah. No, no. That's what other states did, and that's a mistake. We reopen in phases, and a phase has rules. And that's what makes it a phase as opposed to an overall reopening. If you ignore the rules, then it's not a phased reopening, right? People need to know the rules, and they have to follow the rules. They are on the website, but they're specific for specific businesses. Uh, there's occupancy rules. There are barrier rules. There's signage. There's distance. There's congregations, small meetings. 
uh, no sharing of food beverages. Please be aware of the rules and follow the rules. There's rules about retail shopping and how it works and overall occupancy. We have done this in every region across the state. It has worked overall. I can tell you from experience, it works better or worse depending on the compliance and the enforcement and how people follow the rules. The issue going into phase two or phase three is compliance by people and enforcement by local government.